back. It's time for our weekly business and finance segment with Brendan Caldwell, director of Caldwell Securities Limited. Brendan, welcome back to Forum Daily. Always great having you on the show. Glad to be back. Thank you, Nima. Now, you recently returned from the UK, and I bet you have a lot of stories to tell. Uh, but your VP of Marketing, Elizabeth Namovsky, uh, mentioned a story about the monument in Helston, Cornwall. So can you tell us a little bit about, about it and what happened there? I would love to hear from anybody watching if they've ever been to Helston, Cornwall. I was only there to mail our COVID test. It's what they do in England before you, before you get on a plane. You, have, you literally mail in a self-done COVID test. And I was wandering around the streets and found this monument to a man who'd passed away in 1834, Humphrey Millet Grills, G-R-Y-L-L-S. Nobody's heard of him. I certainly hadn't. But he had used his influence working with the banks and others to keep the tin mine in, uh, in that region of Cornwall open, saving 1,200 jobs. He was, by what was inscribed in the monument and the plaque next to it, a businessman. And there's very few uh, plaques and monuments erected to businessmen for what they actually are business people, for what they actually do in business. Uh, but it was just interesting to hear this man's story 190 years later almost about how business was used to actually transform a community. And the, the monument was put up by a subscription that is people put in a shilling, a penny, a pound to, to build this thing because of what this fellow did in a business context. Well, I don't expect many monuments to be built to businessmen in the future, probably fewer than been in the past. It is interesting to see how business can actually affect people's lives in a positive way. Very interesting indeed, Brendan. Now, uh, I want to jump to the topic of uh, capital markets. That's our topic of discussion today. So let's simplify it for our viewers, Brendan. Uh, what are capital markets and how do they work? Well, there are a couple of different uh, capital markets. There's the debt market where bonds are bought and sold. And there's the one that is a little more transparent to people, which is the stock market, where bits of companies, uh, shares are bought and sold, as well as other uh, types of securities that provide you an equity, provide you a, an ownership participation. So there's the, the debt market, bond markets, and uh, the ownership market or the stock market. And uh, uh, between the two of these, it allows for both the, the raising of capital to raising of, of money uh, to fund ideas, companies, businesses, and allows the economy to move forward. So capital markets is an interesting and, and very, in a way, democratic process because it allows investors to have the free expression of capital, allows them to put their money into the best ideas in a country or in a society. And what would you say are the top benefits of investing in a capital market for the individual investor? You have a piece of the action. You own a piece of whatever is good, whatever you're interested in, whatever products you buy, because it's all very well to support, say, Apple by buying Apple products. But if you'd like a, your Apple computer, your iPhone, your iPad, one should own a share of Apple. In fact, uh, some investment uh, experts say that if you're going to buy a product, you should put at least as much, much money into a share of the company whose product that you're buying. In a way, if you like a product, you'll find that in time that the investment you made will, will pay or more than pay for the product that you ended up buying. So it allows you to have a piece of the action, to participate in the ideas and products that you think are valuable. So how can the average Canadian get into the world of capital markets, uh, Brendan? What are the first steps they can take? Well, again, it, it's, it, it's a way of, again, of participating in what your economy is doing. And the way that most people do that is through the stock market, either directly by talking to an investment advisor or, uh, I suppose, uh, using a, a discount brokerage firm. One can buy a, a share, a piece of a company, Apple or some other company. Or if one wants to not just buy one company, but a broad array of them, one can buy a fund, a mutual fund, a, an exchange traded fund. These are vehicles that allow you to participate in lots of different companies and often provide the benefit of professional management. So one can either do it on one's own through a discount firm or, and obviously I'm a biased witness here, talk to an investment advisor professional to help you put your ideas, things that you really like to want to have a piece of, into action by owning a piece of a stock or a fund that invests in the kind of things that are interesting to you. All right, Brendan, just about 30 seconds left, but taking a look at the bigger picture here, I want to go back to uh, you mentioning that monument in Helston, Cornwall, honoring what the world of business does for the community. Um, uh, how does the financial industry help Canadians and the economy and overall the world? Just about 25 seconds left here. 
one must not think of the world and as a, as a fixed thing, the economy is a fixed amount of wealth that needs to be redistributed. Wealth is always being created. So capital markets help in that creation of wealth. They also help for a much broader distribution of wealth because if everything is privately owned, then only a handful of people own all the money. It's the old mercantile aristocratic system of years ago.